Terry, you're precious. Wow. Oh. You guys are precious to him. Oh. You are precious. Woo. Yeah, you're precious. Woo. Hey, how about saying this? I'm precious. I am precious to the Lord. Yes. Do you know that if you can't say, I am precious to the Lord? Do you know if you can't say that? It means that you'll push some of his love away. It means it says he takes good pleasure in you. But if you don't believe you're precious, it doesn't, doesn't mean you're perfect. But in his eyes, you're precious. You're more precious than gold, just like he is to us. We are to him. Oh, man. Was that like sweet or what? If it wasn't my husband speaking, I'd tell you all to go home. <laughs> Almost feels like, whoa, this was really good. Um, Sunday school, you can go if you have kids in Sunday school. I don't even know who's teaching it, so I hope I'm not sending them out to an empty parking lot. In, in which case, Christian, go get them if they are. But God bless the su kids in Sunday school. Lord, you are moving on them, and they're feeling your spirit, and they're wanting to join in with us in the worship. So God, keep us from a performance thing. Keep us from being religious. Help us to enjoy what you enjoy, just the freedom of the children in worship with us. Thank you, Lord. You know, I was, um, if anybody from the river, if you're part of my prophetic group, if you have a word, I want you to come up. Uh, but come up quickly so we don't have to keep asking. I will tell you that one of the words that I had was, um, I watched the, just come up, you don't have to dance up, we can just come up. Um, I watched that little girl this morning, and I thought, and I was watching her, and the Lord kept saying to me, I wish, this is how I wish all my kids would be. You know, she was doing her dance moves and her ballet moves and her kicks, which I think if I did, I'd dislocate my hip. But, um, but she was just so free. She was feeling the music. And I, I just want to encourage you that maybe we can't move quite as well as she can or as freely. But I think God is talking to some of us about, would you let my worship move you? Would you not worry about who's looking at you? Would you not be concentrating on whether it looks a certain way? And would you just bring it to me as a gift? And so I want to encourage those of you that just feel like you just so much want to get out and do something. Just do it. Like, honestly, in my head, I'm an amazing dancer. And then I see it on video and I go, oh, that was not what I thought that looked like. But... God saw my heart was just like, yes. And to, I love you guys, but I don't care if you don't like my dance moves because I'm not dancing for you. And I think God wants some of you to start dancing and praising for him. And you were this morning. Don't take this the wrong way. You were really reaching in, but I feel like he's got some more for some of you. Okay, so Stuart, you have a word? Can you guys just move down this way? Yeah, love this shirt. You can't scare me. I have two daughters. That's right. That's right. Now, this, this word is for someone specific, but I felt the Lord say to give it as a general because there's more than one, but there is one specific. During the song of uh, Waymaker, um, you were singing Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, but your heart was saying, oh, I hope so. Oh, I sure do wish that was true. God's saying, if you would let me remold you, let me remold the truth that you have as what he is real to you. He wants to break off some of that religious tradition so that he can be your way maker, your miracle worker. He wants to be, but it's you that's stopping him from being it. But I, and I just, that's what I felt for the word. Was just so if that's, if that's you, you don't have to put your hand up because it's a really personal so we want you to seek out Stuart at the end of the service and get some prayer for him. But just to encourage Stuart, somebody had a very similar word during the worship and they came to me and they, they thought it was corporate. They weren't sure if it was corporate or individual. And they said, somebody here is wearing a cloak 
and they want so much to believe what God is saying, but they're, they just can't seem to press through. So again, so that's twice. When the Lord speaks it twice, this is your opportunity. So whether you have to write an S on your hand or something, but make sure you come for prayer at the end of the service. So thanks, Stuart. Okay, Tim. I have a word for Kelly. Uh, the figure of God is on you, but it's in a powerful way, a very intimate way. Father sees you, uh, your children, our childlike faith, and that is a reflection of you. So God has something big for you that way. Yeah. Amen. And the second part, this is probably for the both of you, is Psalm 127. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior, our children born in one's youth. Blesses the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in the courts. So remember that you have raised a warrior. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay, Joanne. Um, I just saw a vision. Um, God always revealed himself to as an eagle to me. And I, I like eagle. <laughs> anyway, I saw the, the father, the eagle. That's how he reveals himself to me. And I saw him for anyone who wants a big hug. I saw his wings wrapping itself around each one of us today. Please receive his love. Hey, who wants a big hug from God today? Okay, so why don't we just get really risky and let's stand up if you're just feeling like, I could use a big hug from some eagle wings. And so, ho! Oh, so Holy Spirit, here we are. So just position yourself to be hugged. Don't worry about anybody beside you. Just let your spirit engage with him right now. And we welcome your embrace right now. Yeah, go past our minds. Go straight to our spirits. <laughs> oh, man, just embrace it. Just embrace it. And Lord, for those that embraced a little, would you keep working on them all day so that that hug gets deeper all day? Amen? Amen. You know, if you're a parent and your kids won't let you hug them, how would you feel? That would be pretty hard if your kids went, no, that's okay. No, that's okay. Take the time to let the Father who loves you express his love to you. That's not you being prideful or needy. That is a child responding to their father. Okay. Okay, this morning I felt like God wanted to impress. This week I had a dream, and in it the Holy Spirit told me to write this down. And he said, it's time for the Caleb's to arise. Whoa. It's, and then he said, it's, it's time for us to stop looking at the giants and thinking that we can't do it because he is a giant slayer. So he wants us to walk through like, like we're giant slayers. And then I heard him say over our children and over the people we're contending for, like our children, he says he's removing the shutters. And then I heard him say that. He's chasing after them. You know, like he leaves the 99. He's chasing after them. He's chasing after the people we're contending for with our hearts. And he says he's removing the shutters. So we'll take that. Stay up here. Ho! Oh! Woo! We serve a God who's a mountain mover. We serve a God who leaves the 99 and goes for the one. How many of you have got a child or a friend or a prodigal that you're contending for right now? Okay, you pray for us. Right now. Mountain mover, yeah. giant slayer, we Whoa. thank you that nothing is impossible for you. We thank you that you're lifting off the shutters and we choose not to look at the giant. We choose to look at you and to believe that you are making a way. You are the God who saves and those kids those people they're yours and we just declare that so we choose to partner our faith with truth and not with lies 
We choose to partner our faith with a God, the living God, who chases after our kids, who chases after our the people that we love. Because you are a good God, and you never fail. Amen. Oh, woo. Oh, yes, I love that. That's the God I serve. Um, that's a, just awesome. Thank you so much, all of you that stepped up and took the risk and, and gave words. We just, we really value the prophetic. And so uh, we know that every day a prophetic word may speak to five, it may speak to 50, you know, but God's so individual. He'd even bring a word that's just for you, that nobody else identifies with. That's how much God loves you in these services. And I have to say, Mike and, and um, Jason and Jamie and uh, Tammy, wow. Thank you guys for feeling that spirit today and just not being afraid to keep leading us. Isn't that awesome? Wow, amen. Okay, uh, I almost hate to transition, but Alf's got a killer word. And so Maria is gonna come up. Um, yeah, she's got that on her list. Um, Mar <laughs> they're so used to me forgetting the offering that they're waving the baskets at me. I didn't? Oh, didn't I? I won't tell. That's right there. Oh, no, oh, okay. I'm getting better. <laughs> You're awesome. Oh, yes. So there's a, a, a lot happening at the river. Um, I don't know if you've seen when you came in, uh, there's life group sign-up sheets at the back on the table. Um, don't forget to sign up for a life group. Um, there is, um, do you want me to call up Jonathan? Oh, sorry. I don't like that. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, <laughs> yes, thank you, Doris. Um, so can I have the life group leaders stand up? Then, oh yeah. Jonathan, you wanted to speak about something, right? Mm -hmm. All right. And now you guys can sit back down. Okay, yeah, you guys can sit down again. But I just wanted everybody to see who they are. So we're starting up um, some life groups. This is not like a forever for eternity thing. We're going from March to June. Yeah. Just so you know what you're signing up for, there's going to be um, two, two meetings per month for those, right, those months. And... Um, the sign-up sheets are in their back. There's, I think, four or five groups, five groups. Um, and basically, we're going through, I don't know if you guys, some, I know some people have read the um, Fearless Living, is that right? By Jamie Winship. Excellent book. If you've read that book, we're not doing that book. <laughs> <laughs> but we are going through a, a video series produced by Jamie and um, covering similar sort of topics, learning to hear God's voice for yourself in your own situation, um, identity, hearing what he says about you, stuff like that. So some of the groups are gonna have like potlucks and I'm not sure if they all are, but we're all gonna be going through um, the short videos and then we're gonna have a time to, to discuss that and talk about what God is speaking to you through the video, right? Um, and I know that in discussion, that's often a very powerful way to make things um, real in your own life. Yeah. Different than, than hearing a marvelous message from Alf, but, which is awesome, but it's also really good to, to just hash things out and talk about them and how it's applying. And that's the power of, of life groups, and that's why it'd be great if everybody finds a slot on there and signs up. Um, and then we're also going to have an opportunity to just pray for each other. And that's where we really can kind of can um, come alongside each other and help support each other in life, right? And um, that's also a, one of our goals for these groups. So um, that's what you're getting into. <laughs> As I said, it's not like a forever thing. It's just um, for the spring, basically. And we love to max out our spots there. So can... Can we get the, all the people who are leading life groups to just come up to the front so everybody can see who you are? Yes, please. Okay, so because there's a lot of new people here, you don't know everybody. So 
Michael's gone to Sunday school, so this is Michael and Stacy Baum. They're going to do a group. Olive's not here, but this is Terry and Olive Bocher. They're going to be doing a group. Sarah's not here, but this is, I know, this is kind of the, this is the away side of life groups right now. So this is Sarah and Jonathan Bocher. They're also going to be hosting a group. This is Amanda and James Martins. They're going to be hosting a group. And this is Jamie and Bill Pegg, along with Sharon Durgis, who is also not here today. Really, they're really faithful people, honestly. I'm telling you. So, so you know who you're signing up for. Look at these wonderful faces, you know. And guys, let's just pray for them. So, Lord, you know what? You, there's something about hospitality. There's something about inviting people into our homes that creates the kind of community that we want to be a part of. And so, God, we bless these ones that have said, we want to be a part of this. And whether it is in their home or in somebody else's home or in the upper room or here, Father, the thing is you've called a meeting, and we just want to say yes, Lord. So bless each one of these that have said, I'll step up and I'll help lead a group. And um, we just pray those groups would be so life-giving. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, you guys. So now you know who you're signing up for. Sign-up sheets are at the back if you haven't signed up yet. And most of them are having food. So if you like to eat and fellowship, this could be a win-win for you. All right, so uh, Spirit Cafe is going to be do, uh, going to Teen Challenge on Tuesday. So just a asking for prayers, remember them in your prayers. Um, men's Retreat starts on Friday. Um, yeah, so have fun. <laughs> Listen, all the women are really excited about this. <laughs> all right. Um, Charlie Elf, it's your turn. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, and the offering we'll start with. <laughs> You're, I'm forgetting now. Um, I just want to say, Lord, thank you. Thank you that you are our provider. And that um, everything we have is yours. And we give back joyfully what you've given us. We just praise you, Lord. Yeah. Amen. Oh yeah, in the Monday night classes, um, the second one, the second part starts on t on um, February twenty seventh. Uh, be there at six thirty. Don't be late. So we're just gonna pray for Elf. No, no, no. Maybe one day. I'm just praying. So, Lord, we thank you for this father of the house, Lord. We uh, bless him in Jesus' name. Lord, may the words that he speak be bread and wine to our hearts. Lord, so we pour out your spirit. May it pierce, it pierce the deep places in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We had a little discussion on Saturday morning cleaning about the men's retreat and that uh, 25 men are going to go up to the retreat. And it was uh, everybody's opinion who was there was the ladies had no idea what they're going to do without 25 men next weekend. You know, there's just, it's just going to be a real struggle, a struggle. Be careful what you wish for, yes. So I'm going to challenge you this morning. Anybody up for a challenge? How many know what I'm going to talk about? I, I posted the... Anybody read the update? What, what's, the the, what's the title? What is it now? Theist or atheist? Yes. And I think the Holy Spirit's kind of plowed the ground and made it soft so that some good word could go in as well today. Wasn't it great today? Wasn't it? Oh, man. I just love the way every time we get together, it's, it can be different. It can be unique and, and special and wonderful. And sure was that today. So I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to start out with a scripture that you probably all know really well. It's Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. Anybody remember what that is? 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. I'm going to challenge you today whether you believe in that. All right? Ooh, it went quiet all of a sudden. The New Living says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. The message says, Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. So my question to you, as, as I've been challenged, whenever I challenge you, it's because I've been challenged. I think, you know, it's only fair. If I get challenged, you should get challenged. That's just the way this works. So do we live like Christians who actually believe in God and believe in the word of God? Or are we living like atheists? Where 90% of the time we make our own decisions without reference to God. We talk about we don't want to be Sunday Christians. Are we Sunday theists and the rest of the time we're atheists? I'm going to do a word study on that, if that's okay with you, and even if it isn't. <laughs> so when I say we live like atheists, I said is 90%, you could name a percent, you probably think your percent is 5%, but whatever. If 90% of the time we make our own decisions without asking God, without reference to God, unless, of course, we're in a crisis. How many turn to God? You know, you can be not have thought about God all day, be making all kinds of decisions, and suddenly there's a crisis, and then you think about God. Okay, anybody? Or just me? Okay. Are our lives showing our faith lived out, or do we live our lives showing unbelief and independence from God? So a theist. What is a theist? Anybody know? Somebody who believes in the... I'm reading you some dictionary definitions. Somebody who believes in the existence of a God or gods. Specifically, one who believes in the existence of one God viewed as the creative source of the human race. Another dictionary version says, a person who believes in the existence of God or God, specifically of a creator who intervenes in the universe. Okay. An atheist, it's one of those words where they take the word and put A in front of it. It's like moral and amoral. Like moral means you're concerned about the right or wrong about, of actions, where if you're amoral, you're unconcerned about the, the right or wrong of of an action. So, theist and atheist. So, an atheist is someone who does not believe in the existence of a god or gods. And I read some studies on, on this and looked up some stats and so on. And apparently, one of the motivating forces in an atheist belief system, or disbelief system, whatever, however you want to say it, is that they worry about that part of the definition that says that God intervenes in the universe. That God has a hand in what's going on. And in polls that people do to get stats, many people who identify as atheists were raised in Christian homes. Isn't that interesting? And I was thinking about that and praying about that this week. And one of the things that came up was that Christianity has often, historically and in many places, been taught as that God is angry judge. And there was great revival movements, and one of them we had talked about when we were in at the conference uh, last week in South Carolina. It's about the one who preached, it was Jonathan Edwards, who preached that famous message, sinners in the hands of an angry God. And it was turn or burn. And it was hell, escaping hell is what Christianity was about because God is going to get you if you don't. So if you're raised with that, 
at some point or another, these atheists who were raised in Christian homes had enough of that. And I don't want to deal with angry God. I don't want to be looking over my shoulder every five seconds if I'm going to get smote. And specialize in Old Testament, you know, stories about people getting smitten and penalties for disobeying and all these things instead of the father who Jesus came and portrayed. So in some ways, I don't blame them for wanting to be done with angry God. And so they just decide, I'm just not going to believe that there is a God. Because I don't want to have to deal with him. In fact, I want nothing to do with him if he's so angry. I can't be perfect. Just look at my life. I can't be perfect. I'm, I'm going to get it. So I don't want anything to do with you. And so they say, I don't believe in you. I don't believe there is a God. If you don't believe in a God or say you don't, then what you're saying is, I, am, I have nobody to answer to for the actions of my life. I don't have to answer to anybody. Whereas, of course, we know that's not the case. But this is, we're talking about a person who is living life Another definition of atheist is living life without God, okay? No God concept. So no one to answer to for the actions of your life. So if you decide to believe that there's no God, it follows that there's no accounting. There's no, yeah, I can pretty much do what I want. I mean, there are rules in the universe. I don't want to go to jail either or whatever. I don't want to, you know, but the end of life answering, the giving an account for, uh, I'm having none of that. Because if, if the atheist were to start believing in God, then along with that is the possibility or the probability that there will be some kind of reckoning. If there is a God who made the universe, who made, who set this all in place, and who made us and everything else, probably he has some kind of claim on us. Possibly he has some kind of requirement on us. And so the atheist says, well, I'm just not going to believe it. So also another thing, an atheist has decided to live his life without God. Therefore, he only looked, looks to himself to find purpose in life, to find identity. He makes his own identity, he makes his own purpose. And if you happen to be a pretty confident you know, personality, maybe you have a good identity, a good, you know, giving yourself a good identity, or you've made a good purpose for yourself. I'm not saying that atheists are bad people. Atheists can be, they're just like anybody else. They can live good lives too. They can be generous at times. They can, you know, all these things. It's not exclusive. I'm just saying the core of their belief is that there is no God, so I will never have to answer. Now, if I'm nice to people, they're nice back to me. I like that. So that's I will, maybe I've decided to live like that sort of thing. So, an atheist looks to himself for identity and purpose. As Christians, of course, we believe there is a God. Anybody? Okay, good. So we believe that if God made me, then he is able also, according to the word of God, where it says he formed you in your mother's womb, created you for purpose, God created you and designed you. You are God's masterpiece designed for the good works he has prepared for you. This is what we believe, right? Am I right? Yes, we believe that. And so, because we believe that God made us, we believe that he is the one who can show us our identity and our purpose. So as Christians, we also believe, contrary to some of the Christianity I talked about earlier, where God is portrayed as angry judge, we believe that God is good father. Will there be a reckoning? Yes. I'm going to show you today how to live a life where you can have absolutely no fear of the final reckoning, of standing before. For we shall all, say all, all. we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Ooh. Well, if you live your life as a theist, if you live your life with God, you have nothing to fear. 
So, as Christians, we believe, first of all, that God is a good father, not angry judge. He created us and formed us in our mother's womb. He has a good purpose for us. He has a good purpose for sending us into the world. Nobody's an accident. If you are here, if you, anybody who's born, anybody who's, who's alive, who ever was alive, has a purpose on the earth. God does not send random people out into the world with no purpose. God is not willing that any, say any, any should perish, but that all, say all, should come into relationship, should come to repentance and into relationship with God. That's his starting point. All right? So he created us for purpose and identity. So our starting point in life with God and relationship with God can be to find out what that is. That's our goal. That's our, 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 our race that we run, is to find out who God made us to be and to live that fully, to embrace it, not shy away from it, to get prayer ministry for all the labels people put on you when you were growing up or what the church, the world, society, your schooling, whatever told you you were and ask God, who am I? And live like that. It's a lifelong process of developing your identity and your purpose. So rather than viewing God as someone to be feared and avoided, like possibly the, the impetus for being an atheist is, rather than that, we can accept his invitation to engage in relationship so that he can, we can, in, in every aspect of our life, show us who we are and what our destiny is on this earth. Let me read you the scripture again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Say, all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. New living, seek his will in all you do, and he will show you what path to take. Wow. Listen to God's voice, the message says, in everything you do, everywhere you go. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Are you noticing something? All. Every situation. Every situation. So how then should we live? Are we Sunday Christians? Do we listen to God in everything we do? Are we theists on Sunday or when we think about God, but we're atheists the rest of the time? Now, by definition, the definition of atheism is living life without God. If you're making decisions in your life without God, be very careful. And so this is the challenge, and this is the challenge for me. Are we intellectually Christian, but are we living as functioning atheists? Are we living as practicing atheists or practical atheists? In other words, we acknowledge. Some of you may have been taught, as I was really early on in my Christianity, that Christianity is about saying a Jesus prayer and then see you later in heaven. And the rest of the time, you know, you're kind of on your own. I mean, God's got a universe to run, right? Try not to bother him with, of course, if you ask him anything, remember in the background, he's angry judge. So if you ask him anything, he's going to make you do the hardest thing possible, right? Like, we always used to laugh about the, when the offering was taken. And, okay, just everybody close your eyes. Ask God what he wants you to put in the offering. And, you know, everybody's going, D -d 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 -d, I know he's going to, he's probably going to say, put everything I have in there, you know. We usually tell the story of the rich young ruler, you know, and, and, uh, you know, it's a little uh, what Paul would call manipulation and arm twisting in his, in 2 Corinthians 9. He, and, you know, it's like, it's like, uh, yeah, he, uh, he had to give everything. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, give everything you have. The poor, poor guy. Whew. But, you know, what do you want to walk away from Jesus? Come on. So, are we... Intellectually Christian, do we are we Christian up here, but are in our everyday life, 
are we functioning without God? And to a certain extent, probably everybody is. So I'm not labeling you. You're not atheists. You're here in church today. You're not atheists in the grand sense of the word. But are we living our lives without God in certain areas, to a certain percentage? With God part of the time, without God at other times. Is God involved in the what decisions we make in our everyday life? Do we think to ask God or do we decide for ourselves without God what house to buy? What school to go to? What job to take? What career path to follow? Who to marry? Where to go on holidays? How to use our money? Which church to attend? and get involved in, whether to tithe or not, whether to live generous lives or even how to spend our free time. Do we ask God about all those things and every other thing? Well, the scripture says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths and he will make your path straight. Right? Do we do some or a lot of our lives without God? Do we make all or some of these types of decisions without asking God how these, how our decisions and how what he would have us do fit into our identity and our purpose in life that he has for us? If we don't, if we come to church on Sunday and worship God, that's fantastic. Don't stop that. What I'm challenging you with as I'm challenged myself, will I, will I do an upgrade in my life? in thinking to ask God when I have a decision to make. That's the only way to actually have the fulfillment of the promise that he will make your path straight. Ooh. We just like the promises sometimes without the responsibilities. Do we lean on our own understanding? Do we try to figure out everything on our own? Do we try to figure out some things on our own? Do we try to figure out issues we may have in our marriage on our own? Issues that we have in relationships with other people on our own? Doesn't work. You're so quiet. I could hear a pin drop. I'm challenging you because I'm challenged myself. Will we develop a mindset where we live our, live our lives, actually live our lives with God? Because he's not angry, judge. He's loving father. He has a wonderful, amazing, we used to say that in a evangelism. Jesus loves you and he has a wonderful plan for your life. Anybody ever heard that? Well, it's actually true. It actually is true. And so, so much of, so much of um, how you live is based even subconsciously on what you think about God. Somebody once said, I love this, I can't, I wish I could take credit for it, but the person, I read it somewhere, and this great thinker said, the most important thing about every person is their concept of God. The most important fact of your life is what you, who you think God is who God is, what your concept is. And so if you, you can read, you can think God is angry judge and you can read your Bible and you can find, I mean, there's scripture to back up almost anything, right? But if you listen to what Jesus said and the father that he portrayed and read through the New Testament, you will discover loving father and it will change. You cannot change overnight your concept of God, but you can grow in understanding loving Father. You can grow in losing your fear of approaching God. Hebrews 4.16, because we have a high priest who's gone through everything we've gone through. He's gone through everything you've gone through. He went through in his short life on the earth. Because of that, and he's our high priest now before God. Therefore, we can confidently go to get help when we need what? When we need mercy. When do you need mercy? When you failed. 
When you fail, do you feel like confidently walking before God? If you don't, it's because you have the wrong concept of God. Because the Bible teaches, the Word of God teaches, that when we need mercy to get grace to help in time of need, we can confidently go, why? Because we have Jesus as our high priest who has experienced everything we have, has experienced the human condition. There is nothing that you can do or think that will surprise him. Because he's seen it, he's done it, he's felt it. So, do we lean on our own understanding? Do we try to figure things out on our own? Or will we get in the habit, learn to ask God? For example, there was a person who was in ministry. He was a pastor. And he was, he came to me one time and he says, yeah, I'm in a real struggle. Um, this is some years ago. Um, I have, you know, I, I, I'm currently without a job and I have two job offers. I've been putting my uh, resume out and I have two job offers. And um, I'm just really stuck because I kind of like to think about living in this city. But this job, they have a better dental plan. And I went, wow, did you even ask God? Do you think God's concerned about your dental plan? Well, yeah, he is. But do you think God can't look after you if you have a little bit less of a dental plan over here? The question is not where's the better dental plan, where's the best circumstance I can figure out for myself. It's where does God want me to be? Now, this is a leader of God's people. And if that's, I'm not saying that to run anybody down. I hope he, I don't know what decision he made or whatever. But my reaction was, I think you need to just ask God where you're supposed to be. And never mind about wages or anything. Because where you are is the people you're supposed to lead. Where he's designed you to lead. Where he's equipped you and you've taken this training and you've, you're, you're ready. You know, that's what's most important. Not your personal comfort. Where, I mean, God will look after you. You don't have to worry about that. Because he's a good God. And when you do what he wants, when you seek him with, in all your ways, he will make your path straight. Right? I had another person who came to me, a young person, filled me in on all of their educational goals and their, and their career decisions and so on and, and uh, hope, hopes. And, and that's wonderful. My question was, have you asked God about any of this? Oh, well, I, I just thought, you know, just what I naturally, you know. And, and it may be what you naturally want and what you naturally like. Maybe God's will for your life. But how about asking him? Because sometimes you've, I've had to make U-turns in my life. You know, God doesn't want you stationary. So if you're, it's much easier to steer something that's moving, right? So if you're taking a step, you don't know which way to go. You take a step one way or the other. God is very capable of pointing out when you need to make a U-turn. Where you need to get into, into the, the place where he can make your path straight. Right? And so, asking God. About a huge thing like a career or an education. Which facility to go to? Ask God about big things and little things. Somehow we thought that Christianity was just praying to Jesus prayer and going to church and volunteering a bit and maybe giving a bit and whatever, and we're all good. God wants to know about every detail. I once had somebody say to me, I don't have to ask God if I should brush my teeth. He was in response to what I was saying. And I was saying, well, no, but while you're brushing your teeth, you could thank God for whatever teeth you have and for a quick... <laughs> Equipping yourself with, equipping you with teeth so that you can chew your food. And um, ask him to help remind you to be faithful to look after the teeth that he's given you. There's a, you know, I mean, you can bring God into anything. Listen, Jesus said, it's all right if we quote Jesus. Jesus said, God knows how many hair you have on your head, Michael.
In some people's case, it's how many hair are hiding inside their scalp. <laughs> Waiting for the next razor. If Jesus said, your father knows how many hair you have on your head, do you think he's interested in the decisions you make in your life? You see, he cares so deeply about everything because he personally made you. He formed you. He formed you for a purpose. Say it with me out loud. I thank you, God, God. that you made me the way I am. That you made me for purpose. You made me perfect for the purpose you have for me. Oh, help me, God, to find that purpose. Thank you, God. Wow. Do we understand that we have the privilege of amazing friendship with God? Romans 5.11 in the message says, now that we have Now that we have actually received this amazing friendship with God, we are no longer content to simply say it in plodding prose. We sing and shout our praises to God through Jesus the Messiah. We have been given the privilege of an amazing friendship with God, the Bible teaches. Not, do you want an amazing friendship with angry judge? That would be quite amazing. No. Yes, there is a reckoning, and we'll get to that in a minute. I'm not minimizing that. I'm just saying if you live your life by acknowledging him him in everything you do, you will have nothing to fear about the time when you're standing before God. Wow. (laughs) Almost done. We sing and shout our praises. Do we, so my challenge to you is, do we cherry pick the promises of God while avoiding the responsibility part? Do we want him to make our path straight? To show us which path to take, to keep us on track without acknowledging him in all we do? Seek his will in all we do. Listen to God's voice in everything we do. That was a mashup of the different versions of that scripture. If we, if we do that, See, I hope and trust that we will not cherry pick promises without conditions. Oh no, I thought God's love was unconditional. Well, he'll love you even when you make bad decisions. Isn't that amazing? He still loves you. Doesn't love you any more, any less. Make good decisions or bad decisions. But it just does something and warms his heart when you actually ask him and treat him as the good, good father that he is. And let him in to more and more areas of your life. Can we do that? Will we do that? Do we want to live part of our life as theists and part of our lives as atheists without God? No. I hope we will not cherry pick and avoid responsibility. Can we agree that because we have such a good, good father who only wants to totally see us fulfill the destiny he planned for us, to do the good works that he created for us beforehand, that we should walk in, Ephesians 2.10. Then we can confidently, if we believe that, if we believe that, not just, yeah, I agree, yep, you're right. No, believing is you're basing your life on it. That's believing. There's believe and there's believe. Believing is, I take this and I work this into my life. I work the word of God into my life. So, if we believe that, and we can ask his, confidently ask his direction and guidance on any and every decision we make, because we know that he's not going to do. Will he sometimes ask us to do a hard thing? Have you ever asked one of your children to do a hard thing? Something they thought was hard. I taught my boys to mow the lawn. They hated mowing the lawn. And I said, well, I tell you what, the lawnmower makes so much noise, you can shout all you want to and, and you know, tell me, tell the universe what you really feel about your dad making you mow the lawn, but just get the lawn mowed. It's making so much noise, you, nobody will hear you anyways. And they did that for a bit until they, you know, 
loved me so much that they did it out of pure love and joy from then on. <laughs> so if we can get to a place of understanding who God really is, because the most important thing about you is your concept of God. And if you can get your concept of God in a place of reality, then you can confidently ask him about any decision you want to make, knowing he wants to be involved in every decision that you make. Not that you have to fast and pray for 40 days about whether, you know, where to go on holidays or whatever, but just asking him, asking him, including him in the conversation, being open, listening. And if he occasionally asks you to do a hard thing, he never asks you to do anything that, to hurt you. He's asking you to do something because it's going to put you in the right place to do one of your amazing works that you've been asked, you know, destined for. Or, you know, because he's, he's going to teach you something. He's going to upgrade your, your patience. He's going to upgrade your generosity. He's going to upgrade your life. If we, if we take that attitude, we will lead full and fulfilling lives. And we'll be able to navigate even the tough stuff that we will all go through. If you haven't had any tough stuff in your life, stay tuned. Everybody goes through tough stuff. Are you going to navigate it without God or with God? He's as much with you in the tough stuff as he is in the good times. Yeah. And if we do that, if we seek him in everything we do, if we stop trying to figure out everything on our own, if we seek his will in everything we do, then he will make our path straight. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path all. So, I doubt if we're ever going to get to all. The injunction is, in Proverbs, is for all. But how about just an upgrade? How about making a commitment to begin to think about asking God about decisions that you make every day, big and small? Just ask him. Just while you're driving your car down the road, just, you know, ask him. God, is there anyone you want me to talk to today at work? Is there anything you want me to do on my way to work? I got an extra half an hour. Is there anything? Just ask him. Just include him. Let him in on it. He wants to show you great and mighty things that you do not know. If we do this also, we will be confident when it comes time to give an account for your life. How many, how many want to be in a place of no fear? when you think about standing before God. Yeah? Yeah. If you, if you will do this, if you will weed out the things in your life that you've done without God and include God in them, in those things, even just upgrade the percentage of what you do right now, you will grow in confidence. And you will be like, like Paul said, you know, when he was at the end of his course. Remember that? I've run a good race. I finished my course. Henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Ha! <laughs> I have this picture sometimes of, of you know, uh, in another place he says, God, he, this is going to be a grand entrance into the kingdom of heaven. I, I get a picture sometimes of, of a celebration when somebody, when a son or daughter comes home. Yeah. That's the attitude I want to have towards the end of my life, towards whenever this whole thing wraps up. Not fear and trembling, not anxiety, not terror. No. I want to be confident. And that's what he wants for you. He wants you to be confident. Amen? Yes. Amen. Pamela Catherine Dick. who will now lead us in amazing closing prayer. Oh, man, man, did anybody else have a shiver go through them? Like, she's in big trouble now. My, my mind went, I, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I just, Lord, I forgive. Um, interesting concept today, isn't it? Are you living like a practicing Christian that has a relationship with God? Or are you 
actually a functional atheist. So during the week, you make all your own decisions. It's something that we need to we need to ask ourselves. So let's stand. Can I have some of my prayer people come up, please? I need at least four or five of you. Okay, so this is going to be a good prayer. You're going to love this because you're going to repent. Because <laughs> repentance always makes room for more of God. So can we just do this? So just uh, close your eyes. Don't worry about the person beside you. We just want to say, I'm just going to, I'm going to pray it. You can just agree with it. Or if you feel like you need to say it, you can say it too. But God, God, I repent. I repent. We repent. Where we have begun to function independently of you. We have functioned in self-reliance. Where we have, for some reason, thought all the big decisions we can do without you. We are so sorry. Where we thought all the little decisions we didn't want to bother you with. We're so sorry. God, forgive us that our lives would reflect that we know you. That our lives would reflect we have an alive relationship with you that our lives would reflect that we have a God and a Father who is interested in every detail of our lives. And that there is nothing that's happening in our lives right now that you are unaware of or uninvolved in. And forgive us where we've heard the accuser tell us that we're on our own. And if that's you, if you've got something, whether it's a health issue, a financial issue, or a relational issue, you know, I want you just to, we're just going to be quiet for about 30 seconds. And you don't have to say anything out loud. But I want you to, in your heart, say, God, that's me. I have ruled you out of the situation I'm in right now. I've heard the accuser say, you're not with me. And if that's you, you just need to make that moment right now. So, Father, you've heard our hearts. Some of us have been going through hard things. And we've kind of felt like we've been doing it on our own. Would you remind us that you're with us? Would you remind us that there's not a decision that we make that you don't want to be a part of, including brushing our teeth, so that you could bless our teeth and our health Father, help us to stop cherry-picking what we pull you into and help us to increase. Today, we're asking as a people and as individuals that you would upgrade our awareness of you being a part of our life and what that looks like. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, listen, if you need prayer, um, remember the word that Stuart said, the one about being alone and not sure about the way maker. We want you to come up. Stuart's going to be over in the corner here. If you need prayer for anything else, if you need to respond to Alf's message and say, I'm one of those people that have kept God out of a part of my life, sometimes you just need to pray it out with somebody else. So, And if there's something else you need healing, please come up for prayer before you go. But other than that, God bless you. We love you. You're amazing. You are precious. Can you remember that? You are precious, and he wants to be a part of your life. Amen. Have a good one. Yeah.